Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be discussing how the fate of Lalo Salamanca in Better Call Saul is widely regarded as feeling anticlimactic, as it's sadly a mediocre ending to an exceptional character. Warning is spoilers for the entirety of Better Call Saul in Breaking Bad, and let's jump right into the video. So as you may know, Better Call Saul is one of my favorite shows of all time. Due to this, I usually have nothing but praise towards it, but very rarely is anything completely perfect. I'm not the type of channel to complain about bad entertainment or focus on the negative in general, but at this point, Lalo's fate feels like an elephant in the room that I've alluded to not being a fan of many times in the past, so I figured it was about time to fully break down why that is. So to set the stage for this discussion, I'd like to quickly recap the situation leading up to and surrounding Lalo's death during Better Call Saul Season 6. Throughout most of Season 6, Lalo faked his death after the failed assassination attempt on him during the Season 5 finale. Lalo managed to trick the entire cartel into thinking that he was dead, but Gus had a gut feeling that he was still alive. Due to this, Gus had to play on the defensive while waiting for Lalo to pop back up and strike as he didn't know where or when it happened. Weeks went by without any sign of Lalo, which started to get on Gus's nerves due to him always being the type of person to be proactive against his enemies, whereas here, he's forced to be reactive. Gus is known for always being multiple steps ahead of his adversaries at any given point in time due to just his high intellect allowing him to plan in advance for almost any scenario. Here, however, Gus feels like a sitting duck just waiting for Lalo to pop out of the darkness. Now, by episode 605, Gus has had Mike's men watching every corner of Albuquerque to spot any signs of Lalo, but to no avail. The more days that go by, the more unhinged Gus becomes, growing impatient and paranoid, shown by his OCD acting up on multiple occasions. So in order for Gus to ease his own nerves, he tries to create defensive measures in any way that he can as he doesn't know where or when Lalo will resurface. We then see Gus get Mike to bring him to the underground super lab location, where Gus starts planning out how to turn the odds in his favor if he were to somehow get stuck down there in a standoff with Lalo. This is a strong possibility in his eyes since the super lab is the secret that he assumes Lalo will go after in order to try and reveal to the cartel that Gus has been secretly working against them. As the super lab is what Lalo was onto ever since his character was first introduced at the end of Season 4 going into Season 5. So while down in the Super Lab location, Gus secretly plants a gun on an excavator and comes up with the idea to unplug the lights down there in order to give himself the cover of darkness to reach the pistol if he needs to during a future potential standoff with Lalo. And as we saw in Episode 608, this is exactly what happened, with Gus managing to land an effective shot on Lalo first, effectively killing him and quote, winning against him. Now I do like the idea of Gus potentially luring Lalo down there with himself to take him out, as he essentially gave Lalo everything he wanted on purpose, but in such a way that Lalo wouldn't live to tell the tale. So why do I have a problem with any of this? Well, after watching Gus plant the gun, it was far too easy to guess that he'd somehow have a showdown with Lalo in the Super Lab location and use that gun against him. Not only that, but since we also knew that Gus had to stay alive to be in Breaking Bad, he essentially had the strongest plot armor imaginable, ruining any real tension if he gets into a life or death situation. Due to this, a standoff to the death between Gus and Lalo could have only ever ended one way. We already knew that Gus would survive, but now with the Chekhov's gun foreshadowing from 605, we knew exactly how he was going to do so. Now as a side note, granted predictability isn't always bad, as it can be rewarding to viewers who truly pay attention to whatever show they're watching. See, if a team of writers are working towards a certain conclusion while dropping breadcrumbs hinting about it along the way, it only makes sense that some viewers would be able to correctly predict what's about to happen. So in a way, this makes accurately predicting future events feel validating to the viewer due to satisfyingly being able to put all the pieces together to come to the same conclusion that the creators intended, but obviously before it even happens. That being said, seeing Gus plant the gun in 605 was quite the opposite of this. It was more than just a subtle hint, as it essentially revealed to us exactly what would happen. It makes sense that the show would have to reveal Gus hiding the gun beforehand in order for it to not feel random when Gus eventually uses it, but by doing this, it feels like they've spoiled the answer for us weeks in advance. Now while season 6 of the show was airing, many viewers and YouTubers, myself included, kept overthinking what would happen due to feeling like there needed to be more. This is because that's what we're used to when it comes to Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Both shows usually have an immaculate way to just subvert our expectations in the best ways, while still making complete sense logically and story-wise. So we thought there always had to be more to Gus's plan or Lalo's fate, but in this particular case, there never was more. That truly was it. This is partly why I felt so underwhelmed, as we've been led to believe that there's always more to it than just taking whatever situation we're shown at face value. So when we found out that there was no subversion or twist, it made Lalo's death fall flat due to the conclusion feeling so obvious. 
Now, usually when giving constructive criticism or complaining about something not living up to expectations, it is usually nice to offer a counterpoint of how they could have gone about things differently to avoid the problem altogether. That being said, I'm no writer, nor would I claim to be, I'm just a huge fan who loves discussing my opinions due to being so passionate for my favorite pieces of entertainment. Gus planting the gun was also too obvious because it was the only contingency plan that we ever really saw him do, causing it to feel like the most blatant Chekhov's gun situation that I've ever seen. So it's kind of crazy how our predictions ever since 605 turned out to be exactly what happened in 608, even though I imagine Gus had like a hundred other failsafe contingency plans set up just like this, but off screen. If we're meant to believe that's true, it would have been honestly nice for the show to give us some others as red herrings to make the eventual Lalo Gus standoff less predictable. I know showing us red herrings would run the risk of wasting screen time, something that viewers are picky about during a show's final season, myself included, but to be honest, I would have preferred it in this instance instance, or at least something else like that that would make Gus's Chekhov's gun from 605 feel less blatantly obvious. If we saw other contingency plans that Gus had set up for different scenarios as well, it would have kept us guessing as to which one he'd end up relying on when Lala finally struck, instead of just showing us the one of him placing the gun down in the super lab and that's it. Moving on though, it's not just the fact that Gus using the hidden gun to kill Lala was so predictable, but it's the fact that so much time had passed between Gus planting the gun and him using it that caused the wait and anticipation to become so underwhelming. You gotta keep in mind that Lalo was gone for multiple episodes while making his way to Germany and back, so it caused a lot of anticipation right alongside Gus of wondering when he'll eventually return. This excitement, however, got deflated once the only main theory that we could have thought of actually came to fruition exactly how we had anticipated. Viewers watching this show, especially six seasons in, on top of having already probably seen Breaking Bad, know that everything shown on screen in these shows is there for a reason. Plus, the Chekhov's gun idea has to be the most classic example of this. So with that all in mind, let's just quickly run through the timeline of how this all came to fruition in regards to real life. We first saw Gus plant the gun in 605, so not only is that three episodes before Lalo's death in 608, which would have normally already been three weeks to wait for the payoff, but since 607 to 608 had a mid-season break, that meant we had to wait nine weeks total between Gus planting the gun in 605 and Gus using the gun to kill Lalo in 608. This means we had a lot of time to speculate on how Lalo would die, if Gus would be the one to do it, and how the secret gun that he planted would come into play. To be fair, the creators never meant to split up season 6 into two parts and only created the mid-season break due to multiple understandable delays. Even so, what would have still been the regular three weeks between 605 and 608 would have still been a lot of time to speculate on the obvious, as we were already fairly certain what was going to happen by the end of 605 and well into 606 and 607. This essentially boils down to Lalu's death being slightly underwhelming due to it being so predictable weeks and weeks in advance. Now maybe the creators thought casual viewers would have forgotten about Gus planting the gun since it happened episodes beforehand, but the creators proudly write both shows while knowing in the back of their heads that their viewers are smart and do pay complete attention, allowing them to not have to hand fist information down our throats as we're able to figure things out for ourselves. Now I do still enjoy episode 608 as well as the entire situation is surrounding Lalo's death, but the death itself is something that I usually gloss over or don't like to think about too much while reminiscing about the episode or this story arc in general due to the predictability kind of causing it to fall flat in my opinion, and that kind of sucks to think back on how my favorite antagonist of the show has a disappointingly and underwhelming end due to it just being so predictable. Lalo's not only potentially the best antagonist from the Breaking Bad universe, even over Gus, but also one of my favorite villains of all time. After Lalo completely stole the show in the best way possible throughout the final few seasons, it's just disappointing how lame his death felt after how amazing of a character he had become. Plus, with how amazingly intense episodes 607 and 608 were, it felt like it was all building up to the ending to Lalo's character, which ultimately fell flat once all was said and done. I get the cliche of, oh, it's not the destination, but the journey along the way, which is true in some cases. So there is the silver lining of still getting enjoyment out of most of 607 and 608, along with Lalo's character in general throughout the entirety of the show, even if his end did feel underwhelming. But the thing is, I know these show creators are able to write extraordinary deaths for top tier characters. I mean, just look at Gus's fate in Breaking Bad, for example. His death is one of the most iconic moments of that show, and for good reason. I understand how it's sometimes hard to live up to expectations or top yourself when you've already created something so perfect, but still, considering how shocking and wild Gus's death is in Breaking Bad, I just feel like Lalo deserved something more climactic, but instead, his death was the complete opposite. 
The predictability kind of made it feel like his character just fizzled out, which is a shame since the rest of the show is top tier, as some of you may know if you've seen my tier list videos for Better Call Saul. The Lalo Gus final confrontation being a tad too predictable is one of the rare gripes that I have with the entire final season of Better Call Saul, or even in regard to the entire show in general. Now, I did want to briefly bring up Lalo's body getting buried under the floor of the Super Lab by the end of the episode, which was awesome to actually see come to fruition, even though that in itself had been a huge fan theory for years and years ever since Lalo's character was first introduced. So why do I like how Lalo's body was buried under the Super Lab compared to the way that Gus killed Lalo? I think the simple answer is the fact that Lalo's body being buried the way that it was was something that I hoped would happen but didn't think actually would. On the other hand, Gus killing Lalo the way that he did was something I hoped wouldn't happen and that wouldn't be as cut and dry as it turned out to be. Now if you enjoy the Lalo death, that's completely fine, and as a matter of fact I don't necessarily hate it myself, I just find it underwhelming and disappointing as I've said, but so much so that it does somewhat bother me enough to want to air my grievances with it as you can probably tell by the fact that I dedicated this entire video to it. So although I do consider it one of the weakest deaths in the entire Breaking Bad universe, it doesn't ruin the show for me or anything like that. If you saw my Season 6 tier list, you know that I still rated 608 highly, just not as high as it could have been, with Lalo's death being the main reason why. So let me know your opinions about Lalo's fate in the comments below. Did you enjoy it, did you hate it, and why? Is there anything you could have thought of that would have made it feel more impactful and or less obvious? I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say, but please try and keep it civil as always, especially since I don't normally focus on the negative when it comes to covering entertainment. Speaking of which, I have a ton of extensive content planned for this year, so be sure to be on the lookout for more in-depth and long-form retrospectives, which by the way, thank you for all the support I've seen on them. In the meantime, I do still enjoy creating more quick and concise content in between, such as this video. With that being said, I'd appreciate a like on the video as it helps appease the YouTube algorithm to share my content with others who may want to see it, and also subscribe Subscribe to the channel for more Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul content in the near future. But most importantly, I thank you all so much for watching, especially until the end of the video, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!